I said, awesome, I could, I could do this for the family, I could do this for myself. I go up there and dad goes, oh, show up at the golf course half an hour early. I'm like, Pop, why would I do that? There's nobody there. He says, show up at the golf, he didn't even listen. Show up at the golf course half an hour early. When my dad started repeating stuff, I knew just to do it. I called it immigrant Tourette's. <laughs> it made no sense to me, but I just did it. So I show up at the golf course half an hour early, walking around, and what I'm realizing <clears throat> is that I knew as a result where the pins were placed, I knew how the greens were cut. This was Latrobe Country Club, Arnie Palmer's course. God bless him. And this was a, a, an advantage I had. And I didn't realize that until Mrs. Poland, after the fifth time she had me as her caddy, consistently asking me time and time again to be her caddy. Most of the time, you'd get out once or twice. And I got up there, and she was getting me out as a, as a caddy, like, every day for the week. And it was freaking me out. I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm making all this money. And she says, Keith, one of these days, I want you to come home with me, and I want you to meet my son. I'm like, hmm, this is getting creepy. Um, <laughs> by the way, this is not a Mrs. Robinson story, or it's not going there. And, and I said, uh, she said, what do you want to do with your life? I said, well, I don't know, I want to go to college. I had a dream, but I wasn't sharing it with her because I hated rich people. <laughs> really did. Rich people were scary. Rich people's kids made fun of me at school for the clothes that I had. I wanted to have nothing to do with them. And one day she said, Keith, damn it, what do you want to do with your life? I've been asking you these questions and you're just ignoring me. I said, well, I know you're going to laugh, but my dad says if I study real hard and I work real hard, I could be president of the United States. Like anybody can, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> and, and she said, you know what? You could, and I would vote for you. Two weeks later, she had the local congressman, Murtha, in her foursome. Congressman Murtha took me under his wing, said that I should get into speech and debate, got me resources for Lincoln-Douglas debate and research that I wouldn't have had access to otherwise, gave me full access to his offices. Within two years, I had won the national speech and debate tournament as a little kid, and that got me into Yale University. There would have been no way that that path would have happened if Mrs. P Poland hadn't been persistent to say, what do you want to do with your life? Now, why did I push her away? The same reason every one of you sees somebody important, every one of us sees somebody important, we don't want to go up and talk to them. My dad used to say, the worst thing could always have to ask, the worst thing anybody could say is no. But there's all of these limiting factors, I call them glass ceilings. There's all these glass ceilings that all of us has because the tapes, the psychological tapes that we play that stop us from being successful. I'm sure a lot of much better speakers than me have been telling you about that, but I'll tell you something, you're not going to break through them by yourself.